Welcome to all our guests, to our observers, to the parents, and to the faculty, and especially the participants who have been attending our special online version of SOCI 2000, Young Artist Edition. So this is our special recital. We have a wonderful program lined up for you. First of all, we're going to hear the Ravel duo played by Vierge Kaplanek and Kay Schleicher. And so I'm going to turn it over to them so they can introduce their pieces. Thank you, David. Um, it's, it's really a, a pleasure to, to be part of this concert. It's, it's amazing that, you know, what, what we do these days. It's so different from truly being on stage. And um, as everybody will see in a minute, we are, uh, this is all pre-recorded. But we just did that a few days ago. And um, Katie and I, we, we oh, well, I should say that one late night, I received a text from Katie and she says, Yeshi, do you know we, we, we will have this concert at Saucy? Would you like to play a Ravel duo? And I never played it before. She did. <laughs> so, um, uh, but I, I, I love the piece. It's, a, it's a, uh, an amazing, amazing uh, duo. And it's, it's, uh, uh, this is, you're going to hear just the first movement. And um, Ravel wrote this in 1920, which was a, quite a turnaround in his style at this at this point. And um, the the uh, what's what's interesting is that those uh, because there are just two instruments, uh, the whole harmonic language gets skimmed down quite a bit, and uh, Ravel had to turn into writing even more beautiful melodies, which are, you know, kind of lacking the, the harmony because of what I said, that, that there are just in two instruments, but the melodies are just glorious. And um, it's, it's such an amazing uh, in, interaction between the, the violin and, and cello and, and the sonority is incredible. Katie, uh, how- That's it's a piece that I've loved for a very long time. It's it's really one of my favorites. Um, the the cello is really within the violin register at the start, so that you can't really tell the difference between the two instruments. Um, and and finally, the cello descends to its normal voice. And um, but it's 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 such purity. And you can listen for at the beginning um, a combination of of tonalities between major and minor, which is. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a riveting piece, and thank you so much for playing it with me, Yerj. I really appreciate your stepping up and taking the challenge at the last minute. And I also want to point out that um, you, uh, <laughs> this COVID has developed a latent talent of yours, which is to be a recording engineer. And so I'd like to say right off the bat that that every most of what you oh sorry the entire program has been engineered by Yerj. So congratulations to you. Oh. You know, somebody has to do it.
Thank you so much, Yerje and Katie. That was absolutely wonderful. Our next piece, we're going to hear from our piano clinician, Anya Alexiev, and she's going to play the Scriabin Sonata Number no. Two, the first movement. And Anya, would you tell us a few things about your piece? Sure, David. So this sonata, it's actually the full name is Sonata Fantasia. Uh, it sounds it does have sonata form, but it sounds like it's free form. It sounds very free and improvisatory. <clears throat> and it was inspired by the sea when the composer went on his honeymoon. Uh, in late 19th century, he visited the Black Sea and he was awestruck by the, the waves and by the idea of this huge entity and he was inspired to write the sonata and you can hear i think you can hear very vividly the you can see actually very vividly when you hear it the images of the different states that the water can be in you can hear it touched by the moonlight or by the sunshine or when it's stormy so i think he portrayed it very very beautifully and very vividly and it's one of my favorite pieces.
Thank you so much, Anya. For our next composition, we're going to have another piano composer, and that's uh, Frédéric Chopin. Um, and Katie is going to play the slow movement, the largo, from his cello sonata. Can you tell us a few words about that uh, work, Katie? Oh, sure. Um, Chopin sonata, um, we're so lucky as cellists to have this piece in our repertoire because he wrote almost exclusively for his own instrument, the piano, but he befriended uh, a, a wonderful cellist named Franz Schoen, uh, and they were very, very close friends. And he, um, through closely collaborating with his friend, was inspired to write this monumental work uh, late in his life. And he spent a lot of time working on it. And um, the first movement lasts for nearly half of the um, over 30 minute work. And um, this movement, this slow, uh, almost love letter is, is uh, the third movement of the entire piece and is incredibly short in comparison to the first movement. And in spite of its mere three and a half minutes, um, speaks volumes, partly in, in um, conversation with the first movement in its place within the whole sonata. But it, it's also just profoundly simple um, for its um, just just um, lovely phrases and and there isn't a single extra note in there. Um, very heartfelt work and Anya, it's been such a pleasure to play and and work on this piece with you. We had played this the entire sonata back in January, and uh, it's been wonderful to have an an occasion to to revisit this this one movement. Yes, it was lovely. Thank you, Katie. Thank you.
For our last piece today, we're going to go back to another string duo piece. This is a Chaconne by the great Polish composer Pendereski. And here to say a few words right now are the performers, Jerzy and Christine. Krzysztof Penderecki, um, it's a big figure in our lives. As, as, as you know, our quartet is named after this amazing monumental composer. And um, sadly, he passed away this, this March just at the beginning of this whole COVID close up. And uh, he died on March the 29th at the age of 86. And um, the quartet, uh, once we go back to play in, in, on, on the real stage, the quartet would like to do a, a concert dedicated to the memory of, of Maestro Krzysztof Penderecki. In the meantime, Christine and I, um, we've been uh, s s We've been, we've been thinking about uh, adding to our repertoire his Chacon, which is uh, an, uh, an excerpt from his larger orchestral uh, work, uh, Polish Requiem. Uh, the, and and it's the, the arrangement is for uh, violin and viola or violin and cello. And it's a very, very uh, beautiful and close to our hearts piece that uh, we would like to share with you tonight and, and maybe Christine can tell us a bit more, uh, more about the details of the piece. Yes, it's a, it's a very beautiful piece. It's a chaconne. And so with a the chaconne, there is a, there is a kind of ground bass uh, that, that uh, goes throughout the piece and it's kind of, it's the firmament of the piece and it's a descending bass line uh, that kind of holds the whole piece together. And uh, Mr. Penderecki, in his beautiful, evocative writing, writes, uh, it starts out simply, and then it evolves into uh, variations, uh, as Chacons do, and it's dedicated uh, to Pope Paul John II. Um, I forgot to say that at the beginning. Uh, but it has some beautiful ornamentation and uh, he really, uh, he shares the wealth between the violin and viola. So there, there are just some really evocative uh, and very, it feels like he's just, he's just really has a, a message of beauty, but also pain. And uh, it's interesting because Penderecki in his writing in the, in the 60s, he became very experimental and his music is more, it's more of a, um, he's exploring soundscapes and he's exploring what one can do on a string instrument. And so it's a bunch of extended techniques, nothing tonal and nothing based in sort of standard uh, harmony. And then in this, in his last, uh, in his last period of writing, his music is very tonal, beautiful, evocative, as I've said, and it's, um, we hope you enjoy it. We really enjoyed learning it quickly. We learned it quickly, uh, but that was good for us, and that was a good, a good practice uh, for us as performers at this stage of our career, so we hope you enjoy it.
Thank you, everybody, our guests, our participants, the parents, and especially our wonderful, wonderful faculty for this amazing concert. I was very touched by the um, beauty and the depth of these performances, especially at this time, this is really meaningful to us. So um, as we go through our day tomorrow, let's remember the potential of our music to reach out to the people who are beyond the um, restrictions of our homes. Thank you.